Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In the last video, we set up Thunderbird to act as our email client so that we could use Thunderbird to talk to our email server on our Raspberry Pi and send and receive emails in a familiar graphical user interface environment. In this video, we're going to go a little further and we're going to take a look at the headers in the emails and we're going to send emails to another email account that we own and we're going to receive emails from that email account we own to show how our email server is currently behaving. We haven't made a lot of progress in the last video through our list. In fact, we haven't actually ticked anything off at all. This is because the last video sits between two points. It sits between the point saying encryption with TLS here at the bottom, in which we set up uh, the TLS encryption so that we could use start TLS to encrypt our emails on the fly, and before we start working on avoiding our emails going to spam boxes. We're between these two points. In this video, I want to show you how to check that your emails are being sent with encryption enabled, an important step when using start TLS, which adds encryption on the fly. We're also <coughs> excuse me, going to look at what happens when we send an email to another email account that we own, and what happens when we receive an email from another account that we own. This will conclude our section on running our email server through an email client, and then we'll be able to get on to sorting out the issue of sending emails and having them received at the recipient's spam box. Okay, let's get over to my desktop then, and let's get going. Okay, here I am on my desktop with Thunderbird open. This should be as it appeared in the last video. I've got two emails in my inbox. I've got the first email we sent quite a while back in this video series using Telnet, and I've got the email that we sent to ourselves using Thunderbird. What we're going to do now is I'm going to open up the header information. And I do that by selecting an email. In this case, I'm going to select the email that we sent to ourselves from Thunderbird. We want to select that one because I know that Start TLS was enabled or should have been enabled. So make sure you've got the one selected that was sent from Thunderbird. And I'm going to click on more down here in the right hand side. And I'm going to click on view source just here. What you are looking at here is the actual content of the email that's received by the client. So you can see that in addition to the body of the email, which in this case is just hello, which I've highlighted here, and the subject, which is email from Thunderbird, and the address from, which are provided to you when you look at the email in the client, it actually comes with a heck of a lot more information. Now the piece of information we're particularly interested in will be under the received section just here if I can highlight it properly. And what I want to show you, what you need to look out for with your emails, is that it says using TLS. So this part here where my mouse is, using TLS here. This shows that the email was sent using encryption. So I'll just highlight that bit, using TLS 1.3 in my case. So if you've got this in your header, you can see that you're using encryption. Now interestingly, harking back to an earlier video, where we changed some settings on the postfix master configuration file, if you recall, we had to set a line which enabled headers to show the encryption status. Now, if we hadn't have done that, this line wouldn't be here and we wouldn't actually know, using the headers at least, whether or not encryption was set. This is why we made that change. So in this case, I can see that encryption is set. So that's great. I'll close this down. OK, what I want to do now is I want to confirm that we can actually receive emails from external sources, so other third party email providers. Yes, we've demonstrated that we can send an email to ourselves, but let's not forget that that email was sent within our local network. We sent it from our email server to our email server. So we still need to do a bit of due diligence to make sure that we can indeed receive an email from a third party. So open up an email client, any email client, one that you own, which isn't your email server running on your Raspberry Pi. For me, I created a uh, email account using Gmail just for this course. So I'm going to drag that over here. This is what it looks like with Gmail. It's brand new. I haven't actually used it yet. So if you create one with Gmail or if you already have one with another email client, um, open it up and get it ready. 
and we're going to now send an email to ourselves. So click on the Compose button. There we go. And obviously, I don't need to teach you how to um, send an email. Uh, type in the address for your email server. So for me, it's pi at single hyphen entity.com. And I'm going to type something in here to make it distinct. Email from an external source. And then, hello, I'm from Gmail. Okay, I'm going to click send. Go to minimize my Gmail screen. And there we go, I've received the email. I actually got a notification on my other screen telling me the email had been received. I was hoping it would appear down here so you could see it, but it didn't. So I've received my email. It says email from external source. I'll click on it. Hello from Gmail. So by doing this, we can confirm that we have indeed uh, received an email from a third party from an external source. So we are able to do that. That's an important step. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to send an email to that third party, that external source, and see where it ends up. Now, as I've been saying throughout this course, it is going to end up in your spam box. But let's just confirm that by writing an email from our email server to a third party. So I'm going to click on Write. OK, and I'm going to uh, email myself. So I created a new email account called hosting email server at gmail.com. So I'm just going to paste that in. That's my uh, email account on Gmail just for now. I'm going to type in email from Thunderbird. Oops, from Thunderbird uh, from our Raspberry Pi. Just to make it really clear. Hello. I bet I end up in spam. There we go. So this is like you sending an email from your email server to anywhere. This would end up in the same place. It's going to end up in the spam box, but I just want to demonstrate that. So up here in the address, type in any email address you own, pop some information in the subject, pop some information in the body and click send. Okay. So I'm now going to drag my uh, Gmail window back in. There we go, this is my Gmail window open again. So unsurprisingly, I don't have any emails in my inbox. Don't panic if you see this, I expect it to have been sent to our spam box. And this is because we have not met any of the plethora of requirements to make emails end up at a recipient inbox, particularly an established email provider like Gmail. In fact, I believe Gmail are one of the most picky uh, email providers out there for spam, which is a good thing, by the way. So if I click on more, I will find an email in my spam box. There we go. Email from Thunderbird from our Raspberry Pi. So if I click on this, open it up, there we go. This message is reported as spam. Why is this message reported as spam? Well, let's, we're not going to find out why in this video, but let's first have a look at the headers. The reason is because it makes sense for us to confirm on a third party email provider that our emails are encrypted. Again, the reason is, although it almost certainly will be, we've up to now been sending emails within our own local network from our Raspberry Pi to our Raspberry Pi. And it's always good to do some due diligence with a third party provider to make sure things are working the same way when you send an email to a third party. So before we wrap the video up, I'm going to have a look at the headers of the email we've just received in Gmail. You do that in Gmail. I'm afraid I can't show you how to do it in every email client out there. You'll have to look that up for yourself. But in Gmail, there are three little dots here. The more button here on the right hand side. This is available to you once you've opened up an email. I'll click on it and then I'll click on the button that says show original. OK, so similarly to how Thunderbird's show source will show us the whole email as it was sent to the client, this form of doing the same thing in Google presents us with information, as you can see here, in a browser tab. It's slightly formatted it for us, but really the bit we're interested in is down here, the headers. 
So the headers where the, that you look at when an email is received by a third party provider like Gmail will contain far more information than they did when you received an email from your own email server. And that's because they, they do all sorts of extra processing and the email passes between different servers. Particularly Outlook, I noticed, through Microsoft Exchange, the headers tend to be quite long. So you might have to delve through quite a long list of content. But the part you're interested in, the part you need to look for, is the received section. Now there might be more than one of these in your headers. In fact, I've definitely got more than one. There's another one here. Uh, the part you really want to look for, well, you, in this case, I could actually have looked at either uh, because this is the original uh, source from my local IP address. But um, the part you really want to look for, for safety, to make sure you've got the right part, is the part that has your email server's name on it. In my case, it says Pi3 and has your external IP address. And as long as in that block, you can see uh, a TLS version like I've got here. You can see TLS 1.3 is being used. You know that your email was sent from your client with start TLS enabled and your email was indeed encrypted. So it's great for you to check that. And if you see that, you should be happy to know this email was sent over the internet encrypted. Okay. Okay. So we've done our due diligence. We've confirmed that emails that we send externally are indeed encrypted with start TLS. And we've also demonstrated that we can send and receive emails uh, to and from an external source. So that's brilliant. That concludes this video. In the next few videos, which will end this video series, we're going to go through the extensive process of setting up our email server and our DNS settings, in fact, to prevent our emails ending up in our recipient's spam box. It's quite a process, uh, but it's absolutely required in any email server setup. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. Please do like it and please do subscribe to my course if you haven't already. I have a Patreon account if you'd like to contribute to my work. If you do, you'll have access to my videos before they're released on YouTube. I release videos on YouTube at certain subscriber milestones, so I can accrue quite a few videos on my Patreon account uh, before they're released on YouTube. So if you want access to them early, please do become a patron of mine. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.